Howdy, and welcome back to a special edition of the Texas Bucket List. This is our 20th season premiere, and we are celebrating a decade of being on the air across Texas. Now to celebrate this momentous occasion, I'm showcasing some of my favorite stops we've done over the past decade, and our next stop was a no-brainer. From the first time we went there, I fell in love with driving and shooting tanks. So we had to head back to Uvalde to visit Drive Tanks. When it comes to memorable moments on the Texas bucket list, the sound and reverberation off a Sherman tank that I got to shoot fire in the hole is something I will never forget. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So we headed back to the Ox Ranch, just outside of Uvalde, for another chance to see the amazing animals, enjoy the luxurious lodge and dining facilities, and maybe take another tank for a spin. It's hard to describe how nice it is to see people like check their bucket list. You know, they accomplish their dreams. Oh yeah. yeah. There's a reason we're checking this twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Tommy Hartman has been working at Drive Tank since 2020, and he gets a kick out of working at one of the most serene hunting ranches in the state. It's surreal to say the least. You know, I woke up two days ago and there were two giraffe in my front yard. What was your major? Uh, military history. Really? Yeah, so it fits right in. What's it like to be able to actually work in the degree that you got? It's not work, it's, it's a dream, really. Drive Tanks prides itself in being a hands-on experience where you can drive, shoot, and experience all sorts of historic military machines and historic arms. Since we last visited in 2017, it's expanded to offer even more. It even has a military style barracks for folks to stay during their adventure. So we've had a whole new garage. We've probably added right around 10 vehicles, probably 100 firearms. We got everything from howitzers, flamethrowers, RPGs, you know, the, all the works. Wow. So these are the selection of some of the historical weapons and right off the bat, uh, there's the most popular one, I'm assuming. Yeah, Tommy gun, yeah. That's... Pretty much everyone knows it. The Thompson was actually manufactured originally in right around 1918. Oh, wow. Um, but it was simplified through the years. Um, this one is the M1928A1 model. So this is one of the first iterations that the US actually used during World War II. Last time we were here, we did the flamethrower. Mm -hmm. That was exciting. Yeah. Very hot. Oh, yeah. Trust me. You have no idea how intensely hot these far-reaching flames are. Since I already had a chance to feel the heat, there was another antique firearm that's been on my bucket list for a long time. This is the M1 Grand. General Patton called this rifle the greatest battle implement ever devised and it was used extensively in World War II. This one was actually manufactured in 1944, so it's pretty likely that this thing actually did see some combat. We headed to the range with the Thompson and the M1 Garand, and I couldn't wait to test my marksmanship with the M1. You have eight shots, and as we were talking about earlier, when you run out of ammo, you will hear that historic ping. My first target was at 100 yards. Good shot. For whom the bell tolls. Is there a further one? That's when I spotted a target way out at the end of the shooting range. I'm gonna aim for that third one now. Nice shot. How many yards is that? That's 300 yards. <laughs> wow. Nice shot. That's awesome. It's all those years playing duck hunt. Mm -hmm. After finishing the clip, it was time to move on to the Tommy gun. So this is the M1928A1, like we were talking about earlier. Um, this, we're gonna be shooting full auto only. So we're shooting 45 ACP out of these magazines right here. Okay. Exactly what they were using for World War II. Um, and how many rounds is in that? So we have 20 rounds in each of these magazines. 20 right rounds, and how long will this take to shoot 20 rounds? Second and a half, two seconds. It goes by fast. Three, two, one. Holy moly. That was fast. Oh yeah. That was a whole clip? That was a whole clip. That was a whole mag. This is actually a 94-year-old weapon. Mm -hmm. Once we were done being home down on the range, we headed back to the barn to get a look at a few new tanks they have on hand. This is the M41 Walker Bulldog. So wow. this, this tank was produced 
um, in the early 50s. Believe it or not, this one was actually manufactured by Cadillac. It actually really? says, says inside on the data plate, yes sir. Surprisingly, many tanks were built by car companies throughout history. A lot of your German car manufacturers that are common today, they was actually manufactured a lot of military vehicles. So the tank was actually designed by Porsche and manufactured by MTU, which is an element of Mercedes. So it is quite literally, you're driving a Benz. Man, Yeah. Mercedes, Cadillacs, whew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's the tough, dependable Toyota? Oh, right. <laughs> I'll be taking a spin on the Walker Bulldog. This shoots a high velocity 76 millimeter projectile. So wow. this gun was basically designed to defeat um, Soviet medium tanks. What's she running on? That's a gasoline engine or diesel? Yep, that's a gasoline engine. Wow. It's actually an airplane engine. Really? Or not. Yep. With Tommy taking the wheel, I settled in the commander position to take a ride around the Ox Ray. Being able to ride these beasts and experience the tools that the veterans of World War II wielded is more than just an opportunity to do something fun. It's a chance to learn the history of the greatest generation that ever lived. It's kind of hard to understand what their story was like if you can't touch what they use or you know get in what they drove, right? So we have a lot of people come here and you know their parents were in World War One, World War Two. They pick this stuff up and they're like, I didn't know that this was actually this heavy. That this is what they carried for literally two or three years of their life. I grew up just hearing a couple of World War Two stories. Luckily, I was lucky enough to meet a D-Day veteran, and he was on Wave One, and he was really the one who instilled like all this passion with me. And I was like, you went through this, and I don't hear the story being told a lot. Why not? And so I kind of took it upon myself to pretty much devote all my time to that field, you know, just so I can tell that, tell their story. That way, what they went through hopefully doesn't happen again.